Yeah. Then you got to stay at that status. Yeah. Yeah. As he said, you have no, no opportunity to, to turn back. Uh-huh. That's not a privilege anymore yeah. to walk away from your gift that God gave you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's not my message, but hey, God, God sent me a dynamic email, so I had to go there, amen. I had to read it, amen. Yeah. We're going to focus our attention on today. And I got to okay, good deal. I got a lot of time. Bless the Lord. Amen. We're going to focus our attention on today on five kingdom principles, amen. amen. Five kingdom principles, amen. amen. And God also wanted me to dip a little bit in spiritual authority, amen. amen. So we're going to see how that go, amen. amen. David was hitting it all, he was hitting it hard. I said, boy, don't preach my message this morning. <laughs> amen. I don't know what I'm going to do. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Five kingdom principles, amen. As we look in the word of the Lord on today, at Psalms 127, Psalms 127, verse 1, amen. Psalms 127, verse 1, amen. When you have it, say, I have the word. Amen. Can you read it for me then, sir? Let the Lord build the house. Mm-hmm. They labor in vain, they build it. Mm-hmm. Let the Lord keep the city mm-hmm. watchful and waiting, but mm-hmm. in vain. Mm-hmm. Amen. Bless you. The word vain is used three times in those verses. Amen. We see that anything you do outside of God won't last. Uh-huh. I know you deep. Yeah. I know you wonderful. Yeah. I know you can preach. I know you can sing. Yeah. I even know you can hum. But if you don't do it with God, then it's in vain. All right. It ain't going to last. You're doing it in the flesh. God is tired of church folk doing things in the flesh. God is tired of church folk trying to get his glory and not giving him his own glory. Amen. See, God ain't going to share his glory with you because you ain't all that. You might think so because somebody whispered in your ear this morning that you was wonderful and you were deep and you was all fabulous. God don't share his glory with you. Amen. So the first kingdom principle we see is that the principle of promise. The principle of promise in the is a fundamental principle in that the kingdom of God we should not accept anything in our own strength without receiving a promise from the Lord. We read how they attempted to build the Tower of Babel themselves without God. And what happened? God got tired of that jump, came down, and tore it apart. He said, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to do one small thing that's going to blow your mind. I'm going to confuse your language so you can't communicate with each other anymore. Instead of them going on their knees and praying to God to get a divine revelation of what happened, it crumbled. They ran all across the country, left each other. See, Satan does the same thing in the church. I know I'm a, I'm a pastor this morning, but I'm trying to take that head off this morning. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but 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 God does the same thing. Satan does the same thing in the church. Mm-hmm. Try to confuse right. the, the language amongst each other to sow discord when you're yeah. supposed to be speaking the same language. That's right. That's right. The same vision that the pastor has. Yeah. That's good. It's easy to follow the pastor's vision, mm-hmm. but why church folk won't do it? Yeah. Because of pride. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. Not being humble, mm-hmm. putting your agenda before the pastor's uh, agenda, mm-hmm. and they got the nerve to say the pastor he ain't God. Mm-hmm. So why am I following him? Mm-hmm. Why did the disciples follow Jesus? Mm-hmm. If they followed Jesus, and Jesus was what? The word made flesh, mm-hmm. man, he was man made flesh, that was a theo uh-huh. So then, if that was good enough for them, it's got to be good enough for us. Yeah. To follow your pastor, follow your co-pastor, whether it be male or female. Uh-huh. Get that straight now. Follow the vision that God gives them. Yeah. The principle of promise. you got to be able to hear from God. You've got to include God in what you do. Because you're doing it for who? For God. How 
how can you exclude the individual that you're doing it for? Yeah. Because of the generation that we live in. Everything got to be microwavable fast. Don't want to wait for nothing. Minister already said it, he don't want this morning. Don't want to wait for anything. God tells you he wants you to go to A, B, C, and D. We want to jump straight to D. <laughs> Forget all about A, B, and C because we don't have time for that. Not realizing that what you have and what you go through in A, B, and C is going to allow you and is going to keep you at D when you arrive at D. God is tired of our church folk getting a D and not sustaining D because Satan is going to tear your head off your shoulders because you didn't accomplish what you're supposed to learn in A, B, and C. It's easy being seen. We make it hard. We allow Satan to infiltrate our mind and tell us crazy stuff, and then we got the nerve to believe it. God say you healed. The pastor come up, and you come up in the prayer line, the pastor pray for you, tell him about ready to pass out. God hear you. The first thing he do when you leave out the door, Satan say, you ain't healed, and then you gonna believe you ain't healed. The pastor come up and pray for your deliverance, get you set free, you felt the anointing, you speaking in tongues, dancing all around the church. As soon as you go out the door, Satan say, stop dancing. Mm -hmm. Stop being happy. Stop being joyful. Uh -huh. And then you listen to what he tells you. Why? Give God a praise right there. Yeah. Amen. 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 The second principle is the principle of patience. Uh -huh. Can you read Hebrews 6 and 12, please? Hebrews 6 and 12. Yeah. That ye might not, that ye be not slowful, but follows of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Amen. The second principle. Is patience. After receiving a promise, you should not give up the first hint of trouble. When God gives you a promise, He's able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you go through trials and tribulations, don't mean for you to, to give up on the promise. Yeah. Uh -huh. God is not slack concerning the things that He gives you. That's right. <laughs> we need to have patience. Mm -hmm. People these days. Don't even want to come to church. They come to church because the pastor required them to come to church. For God's sake, don't say you're having an evening service. <laughs> pastor, you done lost your mind. You ain't even hear from God. When I come along, we stay in the church all day on Sunday. <laughs> all day. Nine o'clock service, ten o'clock Sunday school, eleven o'clock service. When out, that's when he come back for three or four o'clock service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this generation don't even want to come to church. Don't even want to hear from the Lord through their shepherd. They want to hear from the Lord themselves and then come to tell their shepherd what God told them to tell him. If God don't tell the shepherd first, why am I going to listen to what you said God said? To you. You got to have patience. Amen. See, one thing about patience is you can have patience by praying for God to show you how to have patience. Or you can go out here and run around like you're crazy and allow God to allow you to go through trial and tribulations to receive patience. See, God, all God wanna do is just use us. That's all. But don't get it mixed up. If he tells you to do something and you don't be obedient to him, he'll, he'll raise up somebody else to do what he asks you to do. And then I'm going to show you how good God is. He'll show you the person that he told to do what he told you to do. Am I right about it? 
But no, we so deep, we got to call everybody on the prayer group and ask them to pray for what God told you to do. Yeah. Why? If you're so kingdom-minded, you don't need everybody in the church to agree with you, what God told you to do. Mm -hmm. You just need to be obedient and do it. Amen. And through that, God will show you patience. Amen. Amen. Thirdly, the principle of praise. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Praise. Yes. praise. Joshua 6 and 20. Joshua 6 and 20. You know the song. Praise is what I do when I want to get close to you. Ain't nothing but a lie from the pits of hell. Only time some of us praise God when we come to church. But somebody can see you praising God. Only time when somebody can see you praise God, that's when you praise God. On your job, half of them don't even know that you're born again Christian. I can say that because I ain't going to see most of them on uh -uh, Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Don't even know if you say it. But first thing you do, come into church, hands lifted up. You can't even come to your seat with your stumble over your seat with you. Praise is what I do when I want to get close to you. The pastor said, uh, can you pick up the trash? No, I got my good clothes on today. I'm <laughs> Can you can you read the scripture and prayer this morning? No, Pastor, because I don't I don't feel too <coughs> I don't feel too good this morning. Mm -hmm. See, the minister always said you don't get a break. Mm -hmm. You don't get opportunity to say no. If you got praise in your heart, whenever somebody asks you to do something for God, it's boom, instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Not even a problem, because see, praise is not just in word, mm -hmm. but it's also in deed. Come on, somebody. Give God a hand clap. We got to learn how to praise God in everything that we do. The third principle of praise God inhabits the praise of his people. The principle of praise is a power in the kingdom of God. The walls of Jericho fell down because of the praise of the people. They came on one accord, on one mind, and praised and worshiped God so that the wall came down, tumbling down. You can't now get church folk to agree on nothing in church. They have to get a committee together to have another committee together to agree that we're not going to do what the committee said first. Why is all that? See, the kingdom principle that Prophet Ralph and, and Pastor Gerald and, and Prophet Tracy uh, came together to teach these kingdom principles are awesome. But we don't manifest the manifestation of what we're being taught when we leave the building. <clears throat> How do you say that, Pastor? Because I see it. God showed me. God showed me. I just look at people and just watch them and see how they're going to act. You ain't got to say stuff to people no more. Because the fruit is on the tree. You can even just not, not judge, but just be a fruit inspector of the fruit that they are growing on your tree. Fruit inspector. Not by the USDA, but by the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Prophet. Amen. The fourth one is the principle of provision. Amen. The fourth one is the principle of provision. Luke 5, 1 through 11. Luke 5, 1 through 11. The principle of provision. You have the word vision and you have the word pro. So pro meaning the beginning of the come before the vision. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Luke 5, 1 through 11. Yes, sir. Please. I saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, and prayed him that he would draw out a little fight from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drop. <coughs> Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have tore mm -hmm. all the night, yes, and sir. taken nothing, nevertheless, at our word, I will let down the net. Bless the Lord. 
The fourth principle is provision. Now Peter said, Lord, Lord I done fished all day long and I ain't caught nothing. Now you got the nerve to come on my ship and tell me to launch out into the deep again? Peter was tired. Peter was hungry. You know how we do when we hungry? You, hey, don't even talk to me unless you bring me something to eat. You know how we do when we tired? I, I ain't got time for you. I'm tired. I'm hungry. But Jesus said that he's going to give him the provision. So he said, Peter just launched out a low ways into the deep. And when he was obedient to God, he gave him the provision of the fish. Now, the thing that blew my mind was that the harvest was so great that the nets began to break. Right. That's when God... That's when God takes you from a millionaire to a billionaire to a trillionaire. That's where a mega comes in place. Right. You see what I'm saying? See, there's only certain things you can do on the level of a millionaire. There's certain things you can do on the level of a billionaire. Mm -hmm. But when you get to a trillionaire, it's like unlimited. Yeah. You see, that's what we need to realize. We need to pray for God to give us uh, 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 okay. going to the dispensation of not being in levels, but going to the dispensation where we are unlimited oh, and what God gives us. Yeah. The anointing is unlimited, but we put limits on it. That's right. That's right. When God asks you to do something, the first thing we do is start listing the things that we can't do. Uh, or listen to things why we can't do what he asked us to do. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because I've been there myself. Same thing. Pastor, he, he called me and told me, start the church. I said, yeah, right. I said, I'm comfortable being on the Bishop Green God. So I know you was probably talking to that guy behind me. So I'm just going to let it go. Some of you would have rebuked him. But I was nice. I just let it go. <laughs> and I was asleep one night, he woke me up and said, this is the name of the church, this is what I want you to start. I said, well, bless God. Amen. Couldn't sleep the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. Go sleep right out the window. Mm -hmm. So in that, I had to prepare myself for what he called me to do. I didn't jump straight, I didn't go back the next day and tell my bishop that I'm leaving. God called me the pastor, I'll see you after a while. I didn't do that. In the process, God has to make provision mm -hmm. for us starting Victoria's Life Christian Center. Yes. But we have to, we have to be, me and co pastors have to be patient uh -huh. and humble enough to realize that we still have to be taught and trained. Trained, amen. 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 Something that this generation don't even want to hear. Uh -huh. The word trained. Yes. I worked under my bishop for uh, 17 years, 19 years. Uh -huh. 19 years. Amen. Loved it. Love being a deacon. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to be nothing else but a deacon. Mm -hmm. The love served my man of God. I mean, loved it tremendously. He didn't want for anything. Yeah. When other pastors came to Bethel Restoration Center to preach, the deacons and myself, we had everything covered so that when they got up, they wanted to know could they take us with him when they leave. <laughs> because we loved what we did. Yes. My motto was to do it as unto the Lord. Uh -huh. yes. Everything that you do. Yes. Not what you can get out of it, yes. but do it as unto the Lord so that God will be pleased with what you're doing. Yes. Amen. But if we have to go back to this, you have to realize that God will give you the provision along with the vision. Amen. 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 In 5, Amen. Luke, the 14th chapter, verse 11. Luke, the 14th chapter, Verse 11, the principle of promotion. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yes. Yes, sir. For whosoever exalts himself shall be abased. He that humbled himself shall be exalted. Come on, say so. That word, humble himself. A word that we don't like to hear. When I took a class called Spiritual Authority 1 and 2, mm -hmm. it blew my mind. Yeah. I think every Christian, and Prophet John, she took it too, every Christian needs to take a Spiritual Authority 1 and 2. Amen. Why? Because it will show you who you are in the body of Christ, 
and it also will show you how not to get humbleness mixed up with be, uh, uh, humility mixed up with humbleness. Right. And then also not to mix up disobedience mm -hmm. but yourself calling yourself being humble. Mm, okay, yeah. Amen. That's true. Because we'll try to be disobedient and try to say we're being humble. Mm. No, you just disobedient. <laughs> Amen. And that's what I had to learn. When I was called as, uh, to be a minister, I told Bishop Gray, and I left it right there. I said, God, if he don't say it, he don't see us, then I'm off the hook. I'm good to go. He said, no, son. What I told you to be, you got to be, you got to be in obedience. Now, I thought I was being humble, but not asking them about it, and asking them what do I do, and, and, and what do I read. I just let it go. Mm -hmm. I talked to Bishop one day. He said, well, I wonder when you're going to come back so I can give you some instructions uh -huh. on how to be a minister Amen. and what I expect out of you as a minister. Amen. You know what I expect out of you being a deacon, yeah. but what I expect out of you being a minister. God had to show me that, that now you're operating in disobedience. You ain't being, you're not being humble. You're being disobedient because I was running from the car. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. Just running. Being disobedient, and could not figure out why things weren't going right in my house because I was disobedient. When you're in disobedience, that's the spirit of witchcraft. Uh, All hell break loose in the house. The goldfish jump out the tank, the dog bites you when you come home. You trying to figure out what's going on. You can't figure out what's going on. Because you're in disobedience. As witchcraft, a sin against God. See, the thing about it, God wants you to be obedient to him. Be obedient to your man and woman of God. I'm an overseer. I'm a pastor. Prophet Ralph and Prophet Tracy and Pastor Gerald, Gerald they are over kingdom, uh, um, the kingdom summit. So when I come to the kingdom summit, I'm under their authority. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I do what I'm asked to do. That's right. And I do it with a spirit of excellence. Amen. Yeah. Because I'm under their authority. This is our church building. God owns the church. This is our church building. But when I say, yes, you can come here, then I ask them, what do you need That's from right. us? Yeah. That's right. The house is yours. That's why right. Amen. I didn't come to have I ever came to you and tried to tell you how to run the kingdom? Something. <laughs> I am crazy. I know that's what God called him to do. So when I came under his under his authority, then I come on to do what he need me to do. That's why. Go ahead. He came in, I came in this morning. First thing he said was, uh, how you doing? We spoke for a minute. He said, You up second. I didn't say uh I don't want to go second. <laughs> I ain't saying I, I want to go first. Uh, go I didn't say I won't be last. Come on. He said you're going second. I said yes, sir. Then I said, well, as long as I go before you, I'm all right. <laughs> Amen. You don't want to go after him and Pastor Gerald. Hey, <laughs> no, sir. Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but you have to be humble. Yeah. Amen. That's part of spiritual authority. Amen. Now, <clears throat> spiritual authority covers you are in authority, right. but you under authority also. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Bishop Gray is our covering. Yes, I'm an overseer. He's my uh, covering. When he says we have to be in a meeting, right. then we have to be in a meeting. Uh -huh. I can't say, well, Bishop, I ain't coming. <laughs> I'm going to play golf that day. <laughs> I'll be out of order. Yeah. I can't say, well, I'm a pastor too. Who do you think he's talking to? I have to submit to authority. Right. See, <clears throat> one of the things I tell you, I listen all the time. Mm -hmm. I love to listen. I love to talk to you. I love to listen. Mm -hmm. I was, I was <laughs> listening to this interview. I'm a good talk. I'm having a talk to you. I'll listen to this interview, right? And the guy name is um man, I'm not sure who it is. Um man. Come on, Holy Ghost. Uh 
his last name Brian, ain't it? Jamal, Jamal, Jamal Brian. Jamal. Yeah, that's his name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm bad with names. But I listened to his interview. Mm -hmm. 